My name is Thomas Halliday. I'm a paleobiologist and evolutionary biologist, and I'm the author of my uh, debut book, Other Lands, which will be coming out in February 2022. Now, I started writing Other Lands sort of as a response to a question that I commonly get asked, um, which is, if you had a time machine, where would you go? And um, I realised that, you know, although there's lots of paleontology books that are out there, um, very few of them deal with places, um, and there are some fantastic places out there. That my, my first choice for that time machine question would be the um, the reflooding of the Mediterranean after the after it, um, it dried out in what we call the Mycenaean salinity crisis, um, the biggest waterfall in the history of Earth that we know of. Um, but that's a topic which has very rarely been explored in popular books. And so I think ultimately what people really respond to um, when we talk about biology is not the um, individual specimens or a lineage through time. It's a place. It's being somewhere. It's the feelings and emotions that come with that sense of place. And being a fan of nature writing, um, I wanted to try and explore the, the uh, geological past, the fossil record, through that kind of uh, through that kind of route, um, and it also means that I do get to explore a series of pla uh, places and times that just haven't been dealt with. So most uh, paleontological literature is about um, dinosaurs or the Ice Age or the Cambrian explosion, and that's more or less it. You know, we don't really hear too much about the Silurian or the Ordovician mass extinction. We don't hear much about what goes on in the Permian, um, in, the, in the sort of big continent of Pangaea, the single global continent. Um, we don't hear really anything about the age of mammals, the Cenozoic, apart from um, the very recent times when humans get involved. So this was a chance to really try and uh, uh, put forward the, the knowledge that we have about these lesser known times in a way which would not immediately sort of alienate people with, with names that they've never heard of before. Um, and taking a holistic view, taking each place one at a time means that we can also introduce a lot of ecological themes and think about how looking back to the past allows us to um, look forward and um, predict what might happen in the future. So the way the book works is that there are 16 of these sites and I've chosen one for um, each sort of major division of time back through the last um, 550 million years. Um, and we start off with the most recent one to um, sort of ease you into it with something that's relatively familiar. It's the Ice Age in Alaska and then progressively go further back in time until we are at the dawn of multicellular ecosystems, um, the first time when life got big in um, Australia. Um, and each of these chapters, it's about the site, it's about what lived there, and there's that sort of factual layer to it. But I also want to explore an ecological theme. So the Cambrian chapter, for example, which comes relatively late on, is all about food webs and about predator-prey interactions and about how the origin of the predator affected ecology. Um, the Eocene chapter, the one set in Antarctica, um, the, that sort of, the question I wanted to explore there is what would a rainforest look like which is going to be dark for months of the year at a time. Um, and so we can talk about the, the, the cycles, the way that seasons work, the, um, the way that oceanic currents and atmospheric currents interact and all of the um, <laughs> these sort of global patterns of movement of heat and energy um, contribute to what is the local environment and what can live there and how it lives there. Um, these are, to me, sort of very interesting and important general questions that are applicable not just in the past but into the future as well. After looking back at these 16 sites, 
in the distant past will come back to the present and look at how the ecological principles that we've been exploring through the rest of the book apply to the short and long-term future of life on this earth. I think bringing it back to the present brings in a more sort of direct human response, a human emotion to the environment. Um, this is our world, this is our time. And hopefully by viewing the earth as this sort of protagonist through time, which is simultaneously you know, uh, permanent uh, in the sense of you know, having the same uh, biological laws through time, um, but also ever-changing and often immensely fragile. Uh, hopefully people will respond in a way that is better for all of us.